Hello. Um, so I um, have uh, I'm quite a multidisciplinary, I would say. Um, I'm mostly known for my work in sustainable fashion, uh, where I run a platform um, to promote uh, the people behind the movement, especially, and uh, create networks in the field. But I also work as a photographer, and um, yeah, just kind of love any kind of creative challenge. Um, and today, I, I wanted to share a series with you that I did some years back. Um, is, this, is this a good business? All this clothes. This? Yeah. Ah, OK. <laughs> uh, series that I did a few years ago um, that I haven't shared yet, uh, which I started when I was visiting New York uh, on my own for a couple weeks and was thinking, um, how do I, if I see someone that I find interesting, how do I get to know them? And how do I get to know them so that they remember me? Um, and then I thought, well, I'll hold hands with them because that's, that's very connecting, um, it's more intimate. And I'll ask them um, what they want to have in their life and what they want to pass on from their life. Uh, because I didn't really have the answers to that for myself at the time either. Um, and so I did this and then the two weeks passed and I came back with about 60 um, interviews and pictures. So I'd always, I had an analog camera and I'd always take one photo um, and then start recording our interview. Um, and yeah, then I, uh, I ended up uh, getting my phone stolen here and then losing half of the ones which I hadn't transcribed yet um, and was really uh, kind of frustrated by, um, yeah, by my project kind of not really being there fully anymore. And, um, and I just stopped. So for a while I was still taking photos here and continuing the project. Um, and then last year, uh, someone who was a pretty close friend to me um, was, uh, was, was assassinated in Honduras and uh, he was the last interview that I had uh, transcribed, um, or I was in the middle of it when I was writing it down. Um, and so I thought today I would just share that with you, and I would appreciate if you look over there, there's an installation with lots of different excerpts from other interviews and, um, yeah, pictures behind it, and anyways, now I'm going to read the interview to you. So, that's our picture. <coughs> Is it okay to be worried about someone even though you don't know that person might be, even though you don't know that person might be bothered for you to care? Honestly, okay. I want to make my dreams true. I have a lot of dreams. I want to be a filmmaker. I want to be around interesting people, people that I can learn from, constantly. I want to be strong enough to accept things that will come in my life, like death. I want to travel. I guess that connects me wanting. Uh, I guess that connects me wanting to meet people because when you travel, you meet different people. I want to. I want to be taken away from my comfort zone and go to places where I feel like it is an adventure. I want to have different love experiences with different women. I want to be praised. I want to be recognized, but that being a fact. I have the decision not to be, uh, not the, de the decision of not being localized. Um, that I'm hidden, secretive, like being recognized but not actually being reachable. I want to affect my environment in the most real way of what I want. Not something that I idolize or, or something I find myself in but in the way it feels correct to affect other people under my own decision. This is very illusional, what I'm saying, but that's how I want it. 
Like, I want to affect people with my intentions of affecting them. Like providing others something that will make them be self-reflective. I want to have kids with different women, different love experiences. I want to spread my seed. I told my mom this. She said, don't do this, don't do this. Louis, you'll break my heart. I said, mom, that's how I want it. I'm not kidding. I swear to God, that's how I want it. She was like, no, don't do this. Do you think it might be an illusion? Yeah, I think it might be an illusion. Um, it is a really kind of cool idea though, spreading your seed around, making a legacy, not divided by anything, you know? Have a kid who speaks French, have a kid who speaks Chinese, another one who speaks Spanish, another one that speaks German, and everyone will know these guys cannot be separable. They're all tied forever, and each of them is like Jesus Christ of their own country. Okay, that's bullshit, by the way. But I really, uh, I really want, what I really want, though, is to have kids. That's true. I want to learn about literature uh, and, uh, and cinema and music, but I want to learn about people too, because people are interesting. I never want to have fear again, fear of everything, fear in general, fear of being poor, fear of loving, fear of doing something, working in an area, fear of sharing, fear of trusting. I want to make peace with everyone I have destroyed in the past. I would like that a lot, actually. Sincere peace. I'd like to make love to my ex-girlfriend, actually, again. Uh, I'd like to take the best drugs. And when I mean best drugs, I don't mean something that is exclusive to an elite, but just something that is very rare. In the best drugs, I mean everything in general, not only chemicals, but also alcohol. Everything that is not healthy, but not bad enough to harm me. I want to stop war. I guess that would be the only thing that I would give up. Uh, that I would give up. If I could have that, I would give up my life. I really do mean that. If I could stop war by one single action, take me by, uh, taken by me being called, or a decision I could do to stop war, I would. I really do mean it. I suffer internally looking at people or imagining people are in war. That shakes, that sh takes me. I want to learn the secrets of others. People whose secrets I will maybe never know, but who are alive. Mainly my dad. I would like to know his secrets because he has a lot of secrets. But he never told me. He never told me, actually. I have secrets, but they're not intentional. Just things I'm ashamed of, or things that are better not told, because they provide me with a soft, uh, with a sort of protection. I mean, everyone has secrets, but I want to know other people's secrets. I want to learn other languages as well. I want to learn French and better German. Actually, that is my main goal. That is one of my biggest insecurities, knowing German as I can speak English or Spanish, I wish I could do that. I would, uh, I would like to learn French, but first improve my German. I want to help others, but help them without them knowing. Like, in the action, I'm, I'm not getting satisfaction. It's like helping very naturally. Like, I know I'm helping, but I don't need recognition. Like, if it's recognized, it's spoiled. I want to move back to New York for at least 10 years as an adult. I want to live back in Honduras too, like 10 years as well. I'll live around the lake house with my dad and mom, just have wine and invite all my international friends I have met around the world, and they, uh, and they come and visit me. That would be cool. I want to be prepared when my dad and mom die, be like fully psychologically prepared. I want to die before my parents die. 
or my brother and sister. I don't want to suffer their death. Somehow, I know this is going to happen like that. My dad is 62, so technically I have to die around 49 or 50. I don't want to grow old. No, I want to grow old, but enjoy the fact that I'm growing old because some people grow old, but they're not enjoying it. All right, this is a joke, but somehow it's real. I never want to get fat. It's true, I don't have anything against fat people, but I don't. All my uncles are fat, and I love them for that, but I don't want to get fat. This is actually a family-induced thing because all of my family was fat, except for my mother, and she was not fat because she is very healthy. She never smoked or drank. She was a vegetarian, and I remember in our household, my mom encouraged us to feed only organically. The whole idea of organic food, that's not new to me. I was raised like that. Our menu was constructed of 80% vegetables. Uh, so I don't have anything against fat people, but I definitely don't want to get fat. It's not an aesthetic thing, you know? It's, it's also about feeling good. I am an aesthetic guy. I like sports. I want to meet achieved people people who've achieved something in life, people who worked their asses off for 60 years. I'd like, to meet, I'd like to meet that, those person, for an hour, just to look at them and say, wow, my respect, man. Anyone doesn't have to be, uh, anyone doesn't have to be famous, but does have to be, I mean, it's great if he's famous, but he's not famous, or, but if he's not famous, or she, could someone that has, has done something with his life, with it, just someone who has done something with his or her life, I want to find out if there is God or not. I've been thinking about that lately. This thing could go on all night, but that's not interesting. Just to hear that, just to hear what someone wants. It sounds like a, a megalomatic, it sounds like a megalomatic, you know? Um, I'm not a megalo, okay, I'm a little megalomatic. <laughs> that is, someone who is in love with himself. I do this, but in the most private and personal way. I don't want to insult anyone else's insecurities. You know, I feel like I'm responsible that if I want to do something, that it will affect other people. And I also have the responsibility to do something that will pass on with responsibility. But that's too much fucking work. I don't care about that. I just want to do what I feel comfortable doing and happy. But if I can pass something on, I think that I would just pass on my moments in life with others and hopefully they can bring some events or some anecdote that can be passed on to that person who, end of recording. interesting to hear more of these stories. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, no? Okay. So, yeah, actually, yes? like you, like, were you blessed before the interview? Or, uh, uh, yes. So in New York, I didn't know, uh, the question was if we were friends before the interview. So in New York, I didn't know anybody before that. But when I came back, I decided to ask some of my friends. And this was someone I was friends with. Because I realized, I was talking, having all these conversations with strangers, uh -huh. but I didn't even know that about my friends. So, yeah. It sounds like a small, like, little gem in your plan. It's cool that you can be surprised by the people you have around. Yeah. Yeah. Another question about the I thought this interview was very interesting and all the things um, that was uh, were told. So, um, what, what would you say, the majority of the interviews were like this, or this one was one of the best ones? Um, so, I mean, he's quite a character. It's definitely one, one of my favorite ones. Um, and I did, 
I definitely notice there's an automatic like difference in most cases, not always, but once I started holding hands with somebody, because you, it's kind of like you feel like at ease more, like I can like breathe. Um, I, I expected it sometimes to be more intense because it did happen with a couple where it was a very like not close hand holding, um, say like five and 10 percent or something, no five. Maybe, maybe three people, something like that. Um, and um, yeah, I also had some very interesting interviews though with strangers um, in New York who were really fun and also pretty open, but I could not, uh, I wouldn't be able to say that there was like a general consensus of something um, that came out of that, which I was expecting. Um, I did try to really have like all age groups and people who lived there, people who lived in different places, and yeah, that was something I did try to pay attention to. Yeah. Thank you. And there's, you can go and look and read some excerpts from interviews over there later. There you go, just behind you in this corner. Thank you, Sherry.